Out show. I hope you're having an unbelievable day. We have got a great show for you, and uh, I am telling you, you are going to love it. Rob Sperry next week. That's going to be great, too. The week after that, uh, Sherry Tree from whatever that thing she does called, what's that thing called? Code, the bank code. She's doing, she'll be here the week after that. So we've got a great lineup for you. Uh, lots happening. Obviously, it's election day uh, here on Tuesday. And then on Saturday, it'll be not election day. It'll be in the rearview mirror and we'll know what happened. But uh, very, very excited with these two guests. These guys are bright guys. Uh, both of them, big, big, big proponents of the network marketing profession. A uh, couple of them, very good people. I mean, I really, really love Kevin Grimes and he doesn't even know why I love him so much. It's for the work he does for the underprivileged all over the planet. He is an adopter of children. He is a supporter of really, really underprivileged people all over the world. And I have nothing but mad respect for that. He's taken his position on this planet very seriously. And that's a good thing. Uh, Tony Canuli is just another train wreck. I love him. He is uh, just a guy that is committed to making sure that this, this profession stays straight. And sometimes it costs him hard earned money or opportunity to do so because he's that adamant about making a difference. So with that, I'm going to open it up with Tony because he's going to try to drive the bus and kind of drive the bus a little bit. Super bright guy. He always takes over for me when I'm not here. One of the commercials today that I'm going to take a run at is for Ray Higdon and Rank Makers. And I want to talk about that a little bit too. So you'll hear a little contact mapping. You'll hear a little bit of Rank Makers, which will be funny. And the reason that you you do get the commercials because these two bean brains just told me that uh, they hate the commercials and they're going to have to deal with them. The reason that we do these kind of impromptu commercials on the show is because we go live to Genesis Communication Network during the breaks, and those are hard breaks. So rather than have you guys just go to the bathroom and have an empty studio like most people do, I do it kind of like Imus in the morning and just keep the cameras on and have fun. And Imus hasn't been on for several years. For those of you that just rolled your eyes, who's Imus? He's cool. So I kind of modeled everything I did in an earlier radio career after him and also this because I loved the guy. I loved his intellect. I loved his content and I loved the pace of his show. And we try to do that here. Let's go. Tony Canuli. How are you, my friend? Hey, awesome, Tom. How are you doing, brother? You look awesome today. You're looking so svelte. I just can't believe the change in you. Unbelievable. You look great. Don't you wish I'd change that much on the inside? <laughs> it would be awesome, but yeah. it ain't going to happen. So tell me a story. What's going on? Well, I, heard, I heard you just recently on a live that I was, uh, that I was on, and you were being interviewed by uh, uh, really another pro in the industry. And awesome, an awesome interview. But you were, well, you were sharing from the inside, man. I mean, I was on that thing the whole time. I was taking notes. I still have notes from that. I thought you were saying you were awesome. So... Hey, you're so humble, but uh, hey, listen. Thanks for uh, thanks for allowing us to come on and break the show. I hope I'm not that much of a train wreck, but you know, sometimes I wonder. And uh, you know, Kevin and I were talking a little bit before the show. We got a lot of things that we're going to be talking about. You had mentioned, um, you know, the kind of person that he is, and we had a a great uh, call today. I introduced him to Joe Garcia. You probably know Joe. Joe's a network marketing professional. He's got a few hundred thousand people in his business, and another company and uh, they were connecting and he's kind of buying into uh, Kevin's mission with helping with what he does as he travels around the planet and helping with children and adoptions, including his third child that he just adopted here recently. So we had a great conversation and, and Joe said, I love Tom Chenault. Please, when you get on the show, make sure that you tell him that I said hello. He thinks that you got so much character and he's like, man, that guy, if he sees something he doesn't like, he'll call it out. And so we, you, were, you were the topic of conversation today. But as I was talking with uh, Kevin, we, we wanted to update on uh, some updates on the industry right now. There are some changes that have gone on. And so we're going to be discussing that. We're also going to be discussing a few other things. So it's awesome to be here today, brother. I appreciate you bringing us on. Well, we're happy about that. You know, and Tina.org has gotten a little quiet. The FTC's gotten a little quiet. But that doesn't mean they're not lurking out there. 
And the crypto deals, I see Oren Woodward is now rolling out some crypto deal. I saw a big testimonial on DAG coins this morning from uh, Ted Knighton, and he said it's got the green light on all these different topics. And I just wondered from mm -hmm. you guys if these crypto deals are starting to pass the smell test in the network marketing space and what you guys think about uh, specifically somebody with a profile and an image as big as Oren getting into that bathtub and tell me a story about that. Do you guys mind talking about that out of the gate? I don't mind talking about it. I know um, before we get on the show, and I, I know that, like you said, you know, Oren is very high profile. He's very strong in leadership. Um, don't know him to be involved in anything that would be on the gray area. But, you know, the only way that crypto seems to be still staying around, and, and Kevin Thompson, and of course, even on the show back last year, both Kevin Grimes and Kevin Thompson, we discussed it that anything that looks like you could be. Um, you know, licensing a security, you've got to be licensed for, you can't be selling security. So there are companies that have found ways around that with training and creating other ways around it. Um, I have not looked yet. I mean, this is brand new, the information that you mentioned about Oren. And I also have noticed this connection with Organo Gold with Holton Bugs uh, around the crypto. And that seems to be an interesting place right now in the, in the space, Tom. And I think part of what we're seeing in the U.S. market right now, uh, some companies are growing, but a lot are not for various reasons. Uh, matter of fact, I think we may be heading, my opinion is, is that we may be having, heading into another recessionary period, but network marketing done well has always been incredible during a recessionary period. And I think that there are some companies trying to reinvent themselves to choose to increase their market share. Uh, Kevin, what do you, what's your thoughts on crypto at this point? You've watched it. Obviously, we covered it last year dramatically with uh, US High Tech and BitConnect and some of the companies that were shut down. We did several of those shows when the bubble burst, with, uh, it, it kind of went off the scene. But what's your thoughts on all of this? I know we just started covering it earlier. Yeah, well, Tony, like, like you mentioned, I, I mean, when we say the word crypto, th that can mean a couple of different things. And I think there's a, there's a tendency to paint very, very broadly and think, wow, uh, you know, the marriage of cryptocurrency and MLM is absolutely problematic at, at all levels um and so again you know the, the devil's in the details and so uh you know a lot of the crypto programs out there are investment related programs you know if a program is hey give us your money whether it's uh you know fiat currency whether it's cryptocurrency we'll take it you know our program our bots our technology our gurus whatever will take that money and invest it or do something with it that's going to produce a return for you that's a security there are over 30 different instruments that are defined as securities and in you know federal u.s federal securities laws um the, probably the, the most common one that intersects with direct selling is what's called an investment contract. Yeah, a lot of MLM programs have been held to be securities as investment contract. But when we have investment vehicles where people are giving somebody else their money to be invested, uh, it, it's very, very easy for that thing to be an investment contract, which is a security. There are three elements that are involved. Number one, an investment of money. Number two, in a common enterprise. And number three, with an expectation of profits derived substantially from the efforts of others. Now, a common enterprise is defined as one in which the fortunes of the principal and the investor are intertwined. For example, if the three of us buy General Motors stock, uh, General Motors has a bad year, uh, you know, we don't make any money, we don't get a dividend, our stock's probably going to go down. If they have a good year and stock goes up, we benefit, we're probably going to get a, a dividend from that. Uh, and then, you know, like I said, the third, and, and so that's why I say, first of all, if there's any type of an investment of money, uh, that's, that's, that's a red flag. We look for the other two because they're very, very common. Uh, and then if all three are present, that's a, that is a security. And as such, that company, that program, that vehicle has to be registered uh, with, with the SEC or has to be exempt somehow, which I think probably is, is really unlikely. Is it worth the trouble to try to merge the two? 
I mean, I love Bitcoin. I love cyber. I love uh, all the crypto stuff over here. I can invest and buy that stuff over here. I can build my fortune pretty much risk-free because I've got safe products and I'm doing those things and I'm making the money to invest over here. But when I try to merge them together, it just gets scary as heck. I've been around for a long time, all the way back to Fund America, Zeke Rewards, all the various things that everybody said they'd figured it out. And at the end of the day, the body's laying in the street. That's the trouble some part you know i'm not worried about oren he's a bright guy and he's going to land on his feet no matter what he's done it more than once where he's run into trouble where i'm worried is those millions of people that are following him into the fray if it's not tried and true on all this stuff and i've got no judgment on his deal i don't know it from a hill of beans i just know that the first is always the most dangerous and this feels like very very dangerous to me and that's the least of our worries. Uh, you spoke to it. I think I understand how you feel about it. Um, yep. You're just basically both saying buyer beware. Don't get into anything you can't afford to lose the money on and know that you might be walking down the pipeline of something that might end up smacking you. Is that correct, Tony? Yeah, absolutely. And, and really also we're saying that we don't, it's so new, Tom, we don't have enough information I do know that Oren has been a big proponent. I, as you know, I did a show with him, Leadership Factory, sure. back with Home Business Radio Network. And I do know that he's a big proponent of good principles, being debt-free, living the right way. Yeah. He's not, you know, so if he's, he's figured something out there that he feels obviously good about. But at the end of the day, I think Kevin Thompson, Kevin Grimes, being the senior attorneys here in the space, I think them looking at it and getting a, a perspective would be better. And, of course, we'll report on that. Uh, moving forward, but I, I know that you know Oren is a solid leader, and um, I, I don't know enough about it to really comment. It's so, such a new concept, and nobody ever intimated he wasn't. So you know, I see so many people. Jordan Adler, the great Jordan Adler, Jeff Welch is watching this, who's got a big experience in there. There are some serious people Love around him. Williamson. Love yeah, so here's the deal: they're watching and they're paying attention to it, and everybody. All I want to do is keep this profession in business. I think it's something that's important. That's why I'm on the board of the ANMP. I've actually, I was going to resign uh, a few months ago for something. And instead I've elevated myself, gotten on top of a couple of uh, committees uh, to really bring the rain because I happen to believe in it. Uh, all of you can go to the uh, ANMP.com or ANMP.com. I have no idea what the website is and join for 50 bucks a year. 25. I have no idea how much it costs. I'm a terrible board member, but we're going to take a break on the Genesis Communication Network, and we're going to come back with a couple of minutes with uh, my favorite, my favorite, my favorite advertiser. And we're back. Hello, Adrian. How are you? This is my little boy, Adrian, everybody. So say hi to... Hi, guys. Hi, Tony. Hi, Kevin. Hey, Adrian. Hey, Adrian. So the reason Marianne was able to track both of you guys down and the reason that I know so much about your uh, endeavors down in South America and, and everything all over the world, Kevin, isn't because I'm a, a smart guy. It's because everything that comes out of your mouth, anything you do, or, or uh, Tony with his illnesses and the various things that he's done going all the way back to us becoming extremely tight in a conversation around a train wreck that happened to Tony from a human being that picked his pocket for about $15,000. And that's when I got sense of this guy's heart. I contact map everybody. And by that definition, it means that I just keep data on everything. I am like a private detective and I, the things that I know are things other people don't know. So if I go looking on Facebook or any place else for what uh, happened to get to, uh, whatever his name is, Tony Cannuli. I can't even say it. I'm a terrible talk show host. At the end of the day. Who's the train uh, wreck today? Yeah, every day. <laughs> so here's the deal. I've got information in my database that no one else has. You've got information on me in your database no one else has. And believe me, that's the value of it. If you call me about something on Facebook, everybody knows that. And that's kind of like water off of a duck's back. But somebody like Sean Murphy just called me on the phone and said something extremely close to my heart that made me feel good, that made me feel loved, that made me feel remembered. And that's all any human wants. And that's called contact mapping. And it's something that I've done since 1971. 
and I've been terrible at it. I've had it on yellow stickies. I've written it actually on my arm before. I never had a way to make it work for me, much less anybody else. And here comes my son. And he digitized me, didn't you? <laughs> that's that's the aim. We're trying to make you obsolete. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So talk about it a little bit. Yeah. So, you know, that's really all it comes down to is we we are connectional human beings. We want to be remembered. We want to be we we want to feel important. And what contact mapping is all about is putting you back in the mode of teaching people how to make others feel important. And through that, you're going to learn a ton about them. You're going to learn what they're looking for. You're going to learn how you can serve them. And you're ultimately going to learn how you can find ways to work together because they're going to share all that. And, you know, I had a, a phone call the other day come in. And this guy is somebody who I have been getting to know. And he called me up on the phone. And he proceeded to tell me pretty much the story of the last three months of his life in a 25-minute monologue. And that was, that was not good. It, it was having a hard time going on with a whole bunch of stuff, you know, you know, feeling challenged with what was happening in his life. And at the end of that call, he goes, you know, I just, I really feel like we have gotten to know each other really, really well. And I was hoping that I could list you as a job reference for me, which was the best. But there's only one thing, which is that he actually hardly knows anything about me. And that's totally okay because I love him and I hope he's actually listening today. But he feels like we know each other really well because I know so much about him and because I care about him and you get to be that to everybody. And if you can do that, you make a huge difference in their life and good things are sure to happen to you. And so that's what contact mapping is all about. We've turned that into an app. You can check it out at contactmapping.com, and it genuinely is going to make a tremendous difference in your life. All right, get back to work. It's a game changer. All right. All of the effort and time we spend in training really should be on helping connect with other people. It's all about the connection with other people. Amen to that. Okay, we are back. It is Tom Chenault, and it's the Tom Chenault Show. I am telling you, it is a great day. I've got two people that are extremely serving people. And that's all they lived their life to do. One of them's an attorney. One of them I consider an MLM activist because he's a consultant on integrity. He's a lot like Troy Dooley. He does absolutely everything he does out of the kindness of his heart. If he can cobble together a couple bucks somewhere once in a while, he does that. But serving the universe is more important than anything to him. We were talking about crypto public multi-level, crypto MLM uh, company is not necessarily public and how they seem to be getting more intertwined and somebody is going to figure this thing out and somebody very high profile just came out with a company and a concept and that's Oren Woodward and so I was asking these guys about it and they just said the guy's got the highest integrity in the world if anybody can do it he can I said that's good he's leading with his chin I hope he knows what he's doing kind of what we said right Jeff I mean uh I was thinking about Welch. I was, uh, is that, is that kind of it, Tony? Is that it in a nutshell? Well, it is. And if you're going to say Jeff, that's, that's a good guy to say. Cause I like Jeff. I think Jeff's awesome. So, you know, it's, it is true. And we, we need to know more what he's doing. I believe he's probably has good consultation. He probably has good advisors. He probably realizes that what he does will be compliant with the government in all ways. And it may be not so much crypto as much as it is blockchain technology, it's really hard to say. So until we can look into it further, what we're and I are going to be doing a series of lives on Facebook, uh, live uh, live TV, and um, you know doing this on a regular basis. And Kevin had mentioned about going back and doing a series on where are those companies now. Ironically, when we were in the break uh, earlier before we get on the show, I shouldn't say the break, and uh, which we're going to be talking about. But we'll, we will be getting into this. But Kevin, why don't you tell tell Tom just a little bit about the update in the industry, where you see things kind of at right now, and why we need to be so careful. Why are why do we spend time? Why does Tom do these shows and we talk about issues in the industry? N- not always positive. Some of them negative. Some of them are neutral. Why do we need to be more policing? What's the deal? We we talked about that a little bit earlier and how that relates to what we're talking about with crypto and people's reputations, as Tom is always warning people about. Why don't you share your thoughts on that? Well, I I think a a massive part of the value that both of you guys bring to our industry is is on the educational side of things. Uh, Things have changed uh, in this space considerably 
in the last two and a half years. Um, you know, really talking about the FTC versus Vima case, the FTC versus Herbalife case, and, and, and you know, these things are are really really significant in in terms of helping the industry and helping individuals in this industry understand, you know, where the minds of the regulators and the courts are, uh, because where, where their minds are, what what their thinking is. Is, is critically important to every single company and, and to the entire industry. And, and so, you know, I, I call it climate change, regulatory climate change. And I kind of analogize it, you know, I, you know, I'll mention to people, have you, have you noticed that you, that you haven't seen any traffic delays these days uh, due to dinosaurs? Uh, <laughs> that's because dinosaurs went away a long time ago. Um, and, and we all know why they went away, because, you know, the climate on planet Earth changed dramatically. A while ago, and uh, you know, called an ice age, and they weren't able to survive. They didn't have the capacity to make the changes to themselves that were necessary to survive uh, that that climate change. And so, this you know, it's a metaphor that I use for what's going on in the industry. Uh, and and these really are significant. I, I I would argue, and anybody is welcome to feel free to challenge me on this. But you know, for the last 22 years, the the majority of the industry has kind of taken a hey, we're going to just stick our head in the sand approach with respect to uh, you know what's been coming out of the FTC, what's been coming out of the federal courts, and 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 and, and because the industry has kind of turned a deaf ear, uh, their volume has gotten louder, uh, and and the cases have gotten bigger, and the most significant recent ones again would be Herbalife and Bima, and so. Uh, you know, that begs the question, well, you know, how, how exactly has the climate changed? Well, it's cl the first and, and, and the most significant piece is that, you know, customers are keen. You know, customers are the most important piece in this entire puzzle. Uh, you know, 20 years ago, they were seemingly a non-existent piece. And, and again, I'm not saying that, you know, customers have never been in the equation of direct selling. There are, you know, lots of party plan companies out there. Uh, you know, in which I mean, customers are absolutely the driving force. But for mainstream MLM companies, uh, customers have kind of been, you know, at best, I think, been an afterthought. That that type of thinking really isn't viable uh, in in 2018 and and beyond. Uh, but the issue of you know customer acquisition, customer retention, is ultimately a factor of the value of what companies are bringing to the table, and so. You know, the issue of, of value is also supremely important and one that direct selling companies have to wrestle with. Customers, you know, a customer may purchase a product initially, uh, you know, based on really good marketing, but all subsequent purchasing decisions are ultimately going to be based on that customer's subjective determination okay, of a product so Kevin, or services. Kevin, we've value. got to take a short yes, break. It's going to be short. We're coming right. back right after this with the Tom Chenault Show. And we're back. <laughs> Hello, Adrian. All right. So we were talking about contact mapping a little bit. We're going to talk a little bit more. I'm going to talk about during this break, I'm going to talk about Ray Higdon and Rank Makers because I think that every one of you people, I'm in there every morning. I watch Ray Higdon live every day. I get 90% of the content that I use throughout the day on in my network marketing business, which is a significantly sized business from Ray I talk to people, and so I'm in there every day. I go to Red Frog Coffee before my AA meeting if I don't walk, and I'm doing Gladiator, Camp Gladiator, which is another <laughs> nightmare deal he got me into for exercising kind of like a boot camp and uh, CrossFit tied together. That's why I've got all these big muscles now. But back to it, I listen to Rank Makers. And as I, I would listen to him, I'm watching it on the phone, and I'm watching like half my organization chiming in and watching that. And that's pretty amazing to me because you'd think they were getting all the great training from me because I'm such an unbelievable trainer <laughs> and nobody should be going outside of your unbelievable training to get more unbelievable training elsewhere, which is so arrogant and so hocus pocus and so crazy. I can't tie Higdon's shoes on about 90 things that he can do much, much better than me. So we've got to, we've got to be sure that you're joining rank makers and I don't even know how you do it. But rankmakers.com. He just got rankmakers.com this week. Really? Yeah. Isn't that oh, so exciting? now he's got rank. See that we that was a segue. So Adrian yeah. Adrian would know that. So uh, so somebody put rankmakers.com in the comments. But you got to do that. I mean, he we're a believer in him. 
and we're going to talk about him a lot more. We're going to talk about Eric Warre and GoPro a lot more. We're going to talk about Todd Falcone. And I just want to put light on the good guys because I don't want to say bad things about the bad guys because all that does is elevate their, you know, when you do that, they still get elevated. So the best way is to ignore them and talk the good guys. And I happen to believe that I just mentioned three of them. What do you yeah, think of that? Yeah. And Higdon is doing, uh, you've probably seen all these network marketers pa doing this hashtag 14 day marketing challenge or something like that right now. He's doing this two week long marketing challenge where he's doing another huge live on top of the one he does in rank makers every day it was only 27 bucks to get into this thing and man he just the amount of value that he delivers and the community that he creates around that and the how much he really gets people to actually take action which is the name of the game you know the the, the tragedy is that there's so much great training out there and where we're actually deficient is on action. And I think where Ray has really cracked the code is not just being a great trainer, but he gets people to do stuff. And that's, that's the hardest part, right? That's, you know, that's the name of the game in network marketing. That's the name of the game in trying to build a big organization is you've got to get everybody doing stuff. If you're the only one pulling, you're not getting anywhere. And I think Ray does that better than just about anybody that I see. Okay, good deal. And uh, have you contact mapped him? How many kids does he have? <laughs> He's got one kid. That's a lie. He's got a couple of sons from a oh, previous marriage. Oh, oh, I blew it. He failed oh, the test. Oh, man, failed the test. And Sorry, the, Ray. Yeah. <laughs> but the name of the game, everybody, is pay attention. Pay attention at a level you've never paid attention to with the person across the table. As a matter of fact, you just saw me looking. Uh, Jeff Welch said actually something <laughs> profound on uh, the Facebook comment wall, which I've never heard him say anything profound before. So I want to make sure I acknowledged it because <laughs> otherwise it would have been gone through the stream and he would have never had any claim to fame that he actually said something that uh, made sense. So congratulations, Jeff. I hope you're having a great, great day. And you are one of my favorite guys to beat up on along with the one and only Mel Atwood, who is the vendor to the stars. So at the end of the day, uh, contact mapping, what do you think? I love it. I'm a big fan of contact mapping. And, and they have to go to it. <laughs> and uh, you, all you do is go to it. And once you go to it, you watch contactmapping.com. All you do is watch a couple videos. And once you watch the videos, you are going to be blown away because you're going to know that you have ignored your database for the last time. Because you, all of you do it. You don't. No, see, there's the real training. What's that? There's the real training, Tom. Yeah. What Adrian's teaching. There's the real. I think, in my opinion on this, is that training is overrated. I love Falcone. I love Ray. There's a lot of great people in the space. But honestly, leadership has never been about teaching someone what to do. It's always been demonstrating what to do and then modeling that. That, to me, is where it's at. A lot of people get caught up in training and buying systems and tools. Unfortunately, it can get dysfunctional. What Adrian's teaching, teaching people how to have better relationships, how to be more connected, how to still care and let people know, hey, I give a damn about you, that's where the rubber meets the road in my mind. Thank you. All right. We are back. It is Tom Chenault. You can the commission when we're done. And it's the Tom Chenault Show. This is Communicational Network, and I am very, very happy that you are with us today. We have had a, we've got a great show. This is a long segment. We've got the one and only Tony Canuli. He's always my co-host backup when, uh, when I don't do the show. And, Tony, you have no idea how good you are and how many people want your job. John Milton Fogg calls all the time. Hey, can I be your backup guy? No. Garrett McGrath, can I be your backup guy? No. It's always you because you are absolutely into it. At a, like me, I am obsessed with good radio. I'm not, you know, this, this whole thing about being on the screen here is way overrated. Uh, I tell everybody that the reason I have sweat all over my forehead and I look like I went through the robo wash with the window open is because they've got like nine lights around me. And I am like the rotisserie chicken at Boston Market. I am cooking here. I don't even like this part of it because I have a golf game in talking. But I got talked into doing it on this camera because it just makes more sense. Because somehow, for some reason, people listen harder and more. So we're doing it both places on regular radio, on Genesis and here. But I'll tell you what, I would rather just be sweating and drinking a uh, Diet Pepsi and smoking a cigar behind a microphone at a desk than doing it this way but i'm not the boss so here we are we have got kevin grimes with us i want to talk about income claims i sent you something the other day both of you uh 
on a couple of goofballs that are just that are just still out there talking about giant money being made. Uh, one of the guys from that that uh, HGH or HGD deal, they got this three minute video they send around, and I have no idea if that's good or bad. I've got no idea. I know I got video from a guy that is connected to the top leader in the company, and the guy that sent it to me sent it said, "I want to put you on a call with the top leader." And I should have talked to him just to find out if that was true to see if this top leader was really the goofball that this guy's inferring he is. Because what they told me is after four months, this guy was making $85,000 a week. And I don't know if you guys can do the math on that, but that's 300 and something thousand dollars a month time. And then in another breath, he went on to tell me that that same guy, that same company, Business was so great that they're now on back order. So they weren't even ready for all this great business. But aren't those income claims insanely dangerous and ridiculous and completely insulting, uh, Kevin Grimes? Is that just something you shouldn't do? Uh, yeah, absolutely. That's, that's, it's unfortunate, again, that so many people still haven't gotten the memo. Um, you know, what, what a lot of people don't understand is that, you know, even if an income claim is truthful, even if it can be substantiated, all income claim deceptive. And, you know, and, and that's puzzling to people. But the reason that they're deceptive in the minds of the FTC and in the minds of the federal courts is because it leads the reasonable and prudent prospect to believe that everybody makes $80,000 a week or a lot of people make $80,000 a week, or it's easy to make $80,000 a week, none of which are true, and hence the deception. And so the good news is, is that the deception surrounding income claims is easily cured with a proper, with the emphasis on proper, income disclosure statement. And we see a lot of companies with them. Uh, USANA is a good example. Melaleuca is a good example. Uh, it, it's all about disclosing complete information to prospects so that they, they've got accurate and complete information with which they can make an informed decision. And so, uh, yeah, so again, like, like the FTC versus Herbalife case made, you know, the pictures of, you know, the big homes, big cars, big boats, big hair, uh, those are highly, highly problematic and, and just patently illegal because they are deceptive. The advice I got, because I have a pretty big you know, just because I have a pretty big life. And I asked mm -hmm. these people what I could do, because if, if I, if I'm standing in front of my house and I show my house, it's my house. I'm in front of my house. It's not an income claim. It's my house. So I'm going, how the hell do I even ever show anybody my house if I'm saying an income claim? And they said, go ahead and show your house. Just don't talk about your business while you're showing your house. So don't say, you can't say that. It it's becomes an income claim in and of itself. They have to be separate and distinct if you're really trying to comply to the law 100%. So even if it is your Ferrari, even if it is your house or your this or your that, you, want, you still, want, even if you earned it, even if you died getting it like I did, you still can't go out there and say this equals that, right, Kevin? Well, yeah, not without a proper income disclosure. You know, what a lot of people don't understand is the only party in a position to provide an income disclosure statement is the company. And, and, and this has been true since the mid 80s. It's absolutely mission critical for companies to provide proper income disclosure statements to their distributors. Uh, a company that doesn't do so, in my mind, raises big issues about whether it's really interested in being and complying with the law and giving its distributors one of the most important tools they need to be legal and successful and compliant in their business. Yeah, I agree with that. And even on top of that, a company that is a corporate citizen, Kevin, as you and I have talked about, but the responsibility of the company to monitor its organization to see what they're doing, because a lot of times people say, as you know, well, you know, I'm, they're just a distributor. So, hey, what we can, we have an excuse. No, no, the government will not look at it that way. If they see a bunch of distributors that are doing this, breaking the rules, the whole company can pay the price for that, whether it be an income claim, whether it be a financial claim. And Tom, you had mentioned, you know, the, the HGH gel deal. Ironically, that was the one company that Kevin and I both felt 
that we needed to look into further and warn the entire industry about because, quite frankly, there's more uh, flags to that company than a college football game right now, honestly. And the, the one area you're talking about is a very minimal area. And so Kevin did want to bring some comments to that. We're scheduling a show moving forward with a scientist or two in the space as well. And we're going to be evaluating the whole thing for the entire industry right now because we're very concerned with much of what we've heard in this particular show. But you're absolutely right on the, the income claims. It's, we, and by the way, we were talking about self-policing and somebody on the Facebook comment, I think you saw it, Pamela had asked, why do we need the self-police? I think we should answer that question sometime here if we can today on the show. Why do we need the self-police as well? Oh, my God. If we don't do it, the profession is going to be around or they're going to self-police for us. Here comes, you know, they're going to come up and just keep making the laws tougher and tougher because they don't understand what's going on. They think they're protecting the little guy and they'll regulate us out of business. So if we keep this profession professional and clean, everything gets solved. And the name of the game is laying, exposing the hypesters, basically making sure that they don't have a platform and they're called out when they do. And that's why I love a lot of things going on out there from the MLM watchdog to whatever that will actually, you know, speak to it, you know, and people talk about beyond MLM or whatever that website is that is out there that's so invisible and nobody knows who the guy is you know he brings up a lot of good you know so you know you just don't want to be a subject of his wrath but at the end of the day he's putting light on some bad people which we need to have happen right kevin yeah absolutely there there's a tremendous need i mean law enforcement can't catch everybody law enforcement can't catch all the bad guys uh and so we need organizations like tina we need MLM watchdog. We need behind uh, MLM. Uh, you know, just like does law enforcement always get it right? No, they don't. Does some of these organizations always get it right? No, they don't. But a lot of times they do. Uh, and so, absolutely right. We need to be self policing because if we're not, eventually the regulators and the legislators will be self policing. And as we've seen, um, it's not outside the realm of possibility for them to overreact to a situation that you know negatively impacts even the legitimate you know uh, the legitimate parts of this industry you can have if you and that to be said if you're on behind mlm you may want to be careful with that because uh if you get on behind mlm there's usually some there's always smoke when there's fire there's always fire when there's smoke and the company that we're talking about right now has been the most, probably the most uh, watched company in the last couple of months and made it to their front page marquee for searches with hundreds of literally 250 comments probably by now, I would say, or close to it. And so, but that is, it is a marker. It does give you kind of a gauge, but we do need to watch out because we, most people, Tom, don't know. I know, obviously, we all know with the insiders that we came very close to being regulated out of existence here just a few short years ago before yeah. the change in the administration. Yeah, we were in de deep doo-doo. Uh, and say what, you say, say what you want around Trump, but that did force a big switch in administration and things like that, which basically gave us some breathing room because it warned us enough that we realized we were maybe getting out of the lane a little bit and it got everybody back in. And I want to keep us back in forever. Thus, the you know the the one of the guy from my company, um, I'm not going to say his name, just went on to the board of the DSA, and I was happy to see that. Even though I don't love the DSA because I don't think it's very good for us as distributors, it's pretty good for the companies. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, having him on the DSA, I'm proud of that because it proves that he wants to take the high road, whatever the high road is. And on the other side of the coin, network marketing professionals, GoPro, the various associations like that that are out there really, really trying to raise the level of professionalism is something that we need to do. And having guys like you and Kevin Grimes to beat that drum is critically, critically important. Oh, no. Do we have a on? few minutes, oh. Tom, where Kevin can share? Yeah, we got to take a break do we have a few in a minute. Minutes? Yeah, so you're oh. going to do it right after the break. What do you want to talk about? No, we can just, the company that we're vetting further, uh, we want to just make mention of a few things of why, why we're concerned about it. 
Oh yeah, at the yeah, break. Yeah, that's a good. That's a good deal. We'll take our little break and we'll talk about that. We'll talk about you know the name of the game is keep the clean good people in business and keep the bad people out. And it's a slippery slope, but that's what we have to focus on. So we're going to come back right after this. It's the Tom Chenault Show on the Genesis Communication Network. And there we go. And we're back. And I'm telling you what, Eric Worre's here. So we'll just talk about GoPro for a minute because we might as well butter him up. That's pretty exciting. Oh, man, alive. So it's December 3rd, 4th, 5th, 6th, something during that time frame. And all you want to do is go to Vegas. You want to buy a ticket. You want to go to this thing. You want to sit in the room. Don't be a hall rat like a few people I know <laughs> that are listening to this show whose initials are JWR. S. S. <laughs> I get it. And various people that just stand out there and talk in the hall and then say, I went to GoPro. I learned so much. So you got to be in the room. The speakers this year are off the chain you're not going to believe it you want to go they've got the million dollar earner hall of fame that is million dollars in year in year out uh you know you guys can see with all these bitcoin people and all these you know a lot of things with the money that these guys go way way up like crazy and then they go back down they made a million dollars one time they use that ribbon that they earn that for the rest of their life and you know it doesn't count man you got to do with this thing inside you're in, you're out, save your money, show people the profession's great, and the people that you want to emulate, you're going to see it go pro. And those people, it's like I talked about a minute ago about rank makers, those people that are telling you, oh, I can't go there or send my people there because I'm afraid they're going to get recruited, go right in the bathroom, stand in the mirror, take a hard look at yourself and say that's on you. Because you want to have that training. Once you learn that training, you're going to realize you need more training and you need to go to GoPro and you need to take your teams, take your leaders. Because I'll tell you one thing right now, they are going to get trained a whole lot better than you could have done it. Agreed? Yeah. Oh, without a doubt. Are you going? I, I wouldn't miss it. You're going for sure. Yeah, I'm, I will be there. Okay, you've count. locked it into your contact <laughs> mapping day into... timer. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that, that makes me very, very happy. So good. And I did, oh, Mel Atwood's watching. This is the greatest news in the world. This guy is the vendor to the industry. The one and only Mel Atwood, one of the smartest guys I've ever met in my life. I can't tell you. Got like 40 kids. He shows up. He's passionate. He's been on the board of the ANMP long before it was the ANMP. It was the Distributor Rights Association. I love the guy. He's a complete stand for the profession, wouldn't you say? Mel is the best. He, he is. really is one of, the, one of the smartest guys I know. Yeah, so let's see what else. Holy mackerel. Eric's even talking to Tony and Kevin. It's just unbelievable. Oh, yeah. I am speaking. I am speaking at GoPro this year, but they've kind of squashed me down. And so I'm on something called the dinosaur panel. And so what that means is I'm on the panel of people that they think are probably going to die. So I will be on that panel this year, and uh, there's going to be Metamucil. They'll have some Depends back there in the back, and it's all those old guys that have been around wheel, so long. Wheel you out on the go, stage. Yeah, he's building a wheelchair ramp. It's going to be so exciting. <laughs> but I'm not going for, you know, I don't, I want to hear those old guys, but I really want to hear the young guys. And I really want to hear the people that are doing it on social media. I want to, you know, this Jesse Lee Ward, what she's pulling off, I can't figure out. It is crazy stuff. So go get yourself a ticket. I saw Richard Brooks got a bunch of them for sale for like a dollar, but you have to give him like 10000 So he gives you, here's the deal. What was that whole thing? Did you read I that? I that was actually a really good post. He was said, it? He said, you know, I think it's three, you know, the the, pr the lowest price you could get was 349 and he had he found that he had some tickets that were still 249 that he hadn't sold. And he said, you know, all these people jumped at it and said, "Oh, you know, now that it's 2:49, now I'm willing to go." And he said, "You know, if you're, if you really believe in yourself, that hundred dollars shouldn't matter. And the fact that it does, that's the first, the, the first piece that you need to conquer." And I thought that was a good little post. That's well, it. You know, Eric provides so much value. He provides so much value. He really understands core principles and core philosophies that work, and he brings so many great people together. That there's just so much value in everything that he does all the time. His, his game just gets better and better and better and better so yeah that's you guys it's huge you know what he's doing now that is brilliant he's finally realizing that us leaders are that we come and go 
And what he did was he elevated it and he is now training the companies. So he's talking to the company owners and he is going in and actually partnering with them where the companies can actually use Eric's name saying we are air in one of the, one of the, one of the companies has actually taken a little bit of advantage. He kind of clipped together a bunch of garbage and made it look like Eric was in that company. And Eric is only network marketing pro. That's all he is. He's not in a company. He's not a distributor. He will prove that to you at any time you want to call him on that but he is getting so tied to these companies it's almost that way it is really cool so we're coming back right after this the final this is the final segment of the tom chenault show and so happy to have you aboard i have got two of the greatest guys uh just stands for the profession and and you have to talk kind of quickly because I want Kevin to talk about adopting kids that are in impoverished countries for a couple minutes and give us a way to donate some money. I did it the last time we were on here. I'll give you a little money this year too, Kevin, because I love what you're doing for the planet. And nobody's watching and you're doing it. You're a hell of a lot better man than me. And I just want to acknowledge you for that. And uh, you guys are welcome to talk about that company. Just don't say anything that's going to get anybody sued because it doesn't do anybody any good. So just talk about it. What, what's going on? They're making income claims. Their products are, are you know, it's just a lot of hype going on, right? Well, I, I, well, I'll just make sure that whatever we say, you know, you told us. So we'll be fine with that. But uh, we know a couple of attorneys if that is a problem. But I'm not too worried about that, Tom. You know, and you're right. What Kevin's doing, he has some big announcements on that. And we're going to be doing a live stream, uh, Be Live TV, going on on best business practices. But we just want to talk about just a few bullet points on this company that we've been vetting and looking at. We're going to be doing a full town hall, uh, direct selling town hall on it. And we'll probably have it on or yourself or whoever. And no, no commercials, Tom. Sorry. And uh, we'll cover that in great detail as we get more as we get more facts on it, but um, this this particular company has has been brought up a lot in the last six to 12 months. It's uh, a lot of people say it's all positive. Unfortunately, we've seen the flags, as I was saying earlier, there's more flags in a college football game. And Kevin, uh, I wanted to bring Kevin, he can summarize some of them, and we're gonna do a full blown show sure. on that. So this will just take a minute or two, but it is important that we watch out for our brothers and sisters. It's also important that we watch out for our family and our reputations. And every time we join a company that hurts people, we lose a lot more than just a dollar, Tom, as you always point out. So Kevin, why don't you share just a little bit about some of the things that we've talked about there, and we'll be scheduling that show, and we'll release that here sometime, probably here and later in November. Well, I think it's you know kind of part and parcel with helping people understand how to do their due diligence, how to analyze uh, a company before they get in, or you know if they've if they've gotten with with a, a bad company, uh, you know how to analyze it to to understand what they're involved with so that they can make a good decision. One of the things we say in the legal profession is the only good decision is a fully informed decision, and unfortunately, a lot of people in this profession make decisions without getting not only complete information, but you know, a healthy dose of partial information. And so, you know, whether we're talking about the product side of things, whether we're talking about the opportunity side of things, um, it's really incumbent upon folks to understand what's legit and, and what's not legit, what's legal, what's, uh, what's not legal. Um, you know, for example, when we talk about products, when we talk about product claims, uh, I mean, a huge part of my law practice involves, you know, sales and marketing law. Uh, you know, one of the maxims in this space is just because it's true doesn't mean you can say it. But another is that, you know, whatever you do say has to be substantiated. You know, when we uh, when we talk about personal personal care products, um, you know, whether it's cosmetics, whether we're talking about dietary supplements, whether we're talking about drugs, presumably non-prescription drugs. But, uh, you know, claims have to be substantiated. Not, not merely with anecdotal evidence like, you know, your testimonial, your next door neighbor's experience, but with competent and reliable scientific evidence. And, you know, when you look at the cases that the Federal Trade Commission brings against companies on the product side, it's almost invariably because they don't have any competent, reliable scientific evidence to back up the claims that they're saying. And the law requires that they have it in their possession when they first start making claims. And so there's nothing wrong with a distributor, a customer, or a prospective distributor contacting the company, say, hey, you know, you're making these claims, send me your substantiation for these claims. And 
the companies should have it and they should be happy to provide it. If they don't, that's a red flag. On the products or on the opportunity side, uh, you know, somebody's making eighty thousand dollars in four months. That's a problem. I would argue uh, that you can't do that in a legitimate MLM opportunity. You can't in a pyramid. Uh, nothing grows as fast as a pyramid. Not even the weeds in your garden grow that fast. Um, and if, you know, if somebody liked to disagree, let I'd me let me add to that, that conversation. Let me add to that, Kevin. This is important because a lot of people think if there's a real product or what they think is a legitimate product, it can't be a pyramid or a Ponzi. A lot of people have that belief that it has to be this water, this air, there's nothing there. It's a, it's a Zeke Rewards. It's not a real product. But you could have the disguise of a product-driven deal and actually be a full-blown Ponzi or pyramid. Sure, I, I, absolutely. I mean, the, the product can be you know, just a smoke screen uh, for a recruitment-based opportunity. I mean, we saw that back in the 70s with Coscott Interplanetary, uh, you know, Mr. Glenn Turner. And, and it was basically just an inventory loading situation. You know, hey, we've, we've got a putative product here. Uh, you just need to buy a couple thousand dollars worth. And, and, you know, not even that. It doesn't take thousands of dollars. I mean, even a couple hundred dollars could potentially, uh, you know, satisfy that requirement. You know, the, the ultimate issue is, hey, at the end of the day, is this opportunity primarily based on distributed recruiting, the introduction of additional participants in this program, or is it based ultimately primarily on the sale of legitimate goods and services to customers? And customers are defined as purchasers who are not participants in the compensation plan. Okay, you so got about 50 seconds. Discussion about okay. that. We're out of here in 50 seconds. All Tell right. us about your, what's the website for your charity? Is there anything? Oh my gosh. Yeah, uh, hogarcima.com, H-O-G-A-R-C-I-M-A.com. It's a group home for abandoned kids down in Peru. They're struggling mightily. They've been around for 28 years. They've rescued thousands of kids off the street. And what they do in these kids' lives is absolutely miraculous. So hogarcima.com, check them out. All right, everybody. Or it might be dot org. We're gone. We'll see you next week on the Tom Chenault Show. We got Rob Sperry, the hall rat, and it will be unbelievable. Okay, you guys, unbelievable job. Love you, love you, love you. You did tremendous. Thanks so much. Thanks so much, Tom. Yeah, it's awesome, just Tom. great. I'm posting your uh, website right now. And I will go on there and give you some money myself. I love, I, I watch you a lot more than you ever would believe I am. And uh, you're just a hell of a man. And I, I wish I was as good as you at being a man of the planet, Kevin. And thank you.